Hello everyone and welcome back to Djibouti. We are playing Hearts of Iron 3 with the random scenario generator. Um, and we haven't actually built anything yet. We are almost done with our first batch of infantry. Just June 2nd is how long we need to wait. Um, and actually, before that, our, um, our core of garrison divisions will be finished. Um, obviously we won't... Oh, actually... Yeah, okay. Uh, first, we will actually have our transports, and then our garrison divisions, and we'll actually be able to uh, deploy our garrison divisions to a uh, certain province, uh, which will be absolutely fantastic. We're going to want to build even more transports and even more garrisons, just because um, we don't really want to have to uh, worry about any naval landing, so we're going to, uh, to put garrison divisions on basically all of our port provinces, as well as uh, probably up here. I mean, honestly, uh, attacking and taking over Romania will probably be the easiest thing. Um, for us to do because there is uh, is there a strait actually yeah okay there's a strait between uh, Stranrar and Larn up here oh my goodness and please forgive me yet again for my absolute butchering of all of the uh, all the names in this in this region um, we are going to turn on all the messages we possibly can and uh, and I did reload the game so. Um, if you if you were watching the last episode, the uh, the names stopped showing up on the map. Now they actually show up on the map, which is a weird bug that happens from time to time. But uh, it is a bug, so I'm not too worried about it. And yeah, we're just going to uh, speed five it basically until something important happens. And I believe that's going to be on the 11th of May when we actually oh hello, Soviet Union got some infantry deployed. They deployed it before we did, probably because we had the. Uh, we enacted the um, the specialist training, so that uh, gives us an additional 20% uh, recruitment time. But yep, there's our first transport being deployed. Um, let's see. St. Nazaire is a decently large port. And Bologna up here. Bologna. Bologna? Yeah. Let's do St. Nazaire. St. Nazaire is going to be our main port, I think. So we've got our transport over here. And we're just going to deploy the rest of the transport suit as well. And we actually don't have any extra production, but I think we are going to queue up another four transports um, just to make sure that our practical gets up as quick as we can and we don't actually forget anything. I think that'll be just fine. Um, ooh, descent nonsense. Do we want an additional five neutrality? No. No, we don't. And this does give us a little bit more of a temporary leadership modifier. That'll be just fine. I think I'm willing to pay... Um, industrial capacity for more leadership. I think that's a good a good trade. Uh, we do have a pretty nasty revolt risk, but it'll go down soon enough. Oh my goodness, again! All right, let's uh, let's hike this up a little bit. Let's get negative point one descent per day, seventy IC. This should go away after uh, about ninety five days. This shouldn't be that bad. So we'll suffer through a few months of uh, of high revolt risk. But uh, that's just fine for now. Honestly, I mean, it's really not fine. We don't have any units deployed on the map to take care of any revolt risk. But, uh, oh well. All right. So we've got garrison divisions, which we are all going to deploy to St. Nazaire. And we're going to create a core. And it's going to be the first garrison core. Awesome. Can we get all these guys into one boat? We can. And we're going to move them up to Plymouth. Fantastic. And I believe we've got two full corps of infantry now being deployed. We'll deploy one of them to Paris, the first corps. One, two, three, four, and five. And we've got an additional five, so we'll deploy them to a pump. Second corps. One, two, three, four, five. Can't count. All right. And we're going to create the first army. And we're going to attach you to the Paris HQ. And attach the second corps of infantry to the first army. And the first army... I mean... I do think that the Soviet Union is going to be our primary primary threat. This is their capital, too. This province right here. Really ridiculous. Um, and I mean, that's a pretty long front line for us to, to be worrying about. But I do think that that's going to be the job of the first army. Um, well, no, we're going to leave them here for now. We're going to we're going to keep them grouped up so that we can strategically redeploy where they're needed. 
Like, there's no sense in deploying to a front line that we know um, it's still going to be a year and a half until we actually need to worry about anything happening. But we are going to get our um, our first garrison corps set up um, in an intelligent position. Um, and look at look at this. This is awesome. Awesome example of uh, how practical, um, how how this uh, these uh, these infantry practical and artillery practical um, helps us. Um, as we finished each one in that uh, in that series, the next one got the next bonus. So we go from uh, ten point four three IC to build one infantry unit, all the way down to eight point eight eight IC build an infantry unit. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and that'll be even lower once we finish with this round of infantry in uh, September uh, of this year. So yeah, um, the, the amount of time it takes to build them and the amount of IC it takes to build them is just going down, um, which is good and we want to keep that at number as low as possible. Um, so we are going to build another core of garrison as reserve and we'll queue them up just to make sure that we don't forget about them. And hopefully we can uh, we can take this nonsense off of our uh, consumer goods in 80 days. It looks like 80 days. We are um, no longer running out of rare materials, but we are now running out of a significant amount of energy, which sort of sucks. But I'm going to trust our uh, our AI to be able to handle it. We are. We have 72 total officers, and we need 5,500. That number is going to be really, really wonky for quite some time. Alright! We have our first few research projects finishing. Yeah, it looks like our distribution of leadership is a little bit wonky now, too. Oh well. Industrial production! Wonderful. We're gonna cancel you, we're gonna cancel you. There's that, there's that, and agriculture as well, we're gonna cancel you. Okay. No use of getting those ones ahead of time when we're doing just fine on IC and on manpower. So, no use wasting our uh, our leadership in uh, in those sectors. We are actually wasting leadership uh, researching motorized and infantry weapons and such, but I think that's a that's a good waste. Okay, so this Chartre Chartre is a crappy airfield. We're not going to put anyone there. Falaise is a good airfield. And Paris is an excellent airfield. So we're going to have everybody based out of Paris, basically. And I am actually going to try to keep this intelligent. First interceptor group. Wonderful. And we're going to want to uh, build even more interceptors. But we're just going to add them to the bottom of the list here. Um, that brought our practical all the way up to 12. Fantastic. Uh, oh, that's just one more. Let's build one. Let's build two more. Keep that, uh, keep that light aircraft practical. Uh, artillery, barrel, and ammunition advance. Um, both of these are behind time, so we're just going to continue researching them. It's an efficient use of our uh, our manpower. What is this? We have fractured government. Oh, that sucks. Um, let's do a little bit of raise national unity over here, just to make sure that, yeah, to make sure that our our national unity is as high as possible. Mountain infantry. It's fantastic. Um, Let's take a look at those uh, those Gurkhas again. Because we do actually have some mountains down in the south here. Which would be nice to have dedicated infantry. So let's make a new template. We've got one Gurkha and two mountain. And we don't have the ability to make engineers yet. So we're just going to save this template and wait. Um, once we can build engineers, we want to add those to our specialty units. Because engineers... Um, add speed and um, and make people better at crossing rivers, better at uh, defending in urban areas, better at attacking urban areas. Engineers are basically just all around good. Here we go. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. And yeah, I think we're just going to nix the uh, ooh, marine infantry. Let's build marines as well. We might be doing some naval landings and such. We really don't have the uh, production to continue going like crazy like this. Um, but we are going to add engineers right here. And our cavalry. We are also going to add engineers to our cavalry, um, which would be a good thing. But I'm going to wait until the cavalry are done building um, until we do that. Yeah. And yet again, we are using a lot of our industrial capacity 
to uh, to get the uh, our descent down. Uh, but one of those modifiers did go away, so we are now reducing it at 0.2 every day, which is fantastic. Light cruiser armor advance. All of this is behind time, so we're going to continue the research of it. Heavy cruiser main armament advance. All of that is also behind time, so we are going to continue researching that. And we're going to be building um, light cruisers because they're they're cheap um, to get our practical up. Right now, we have two of them in production, only two, which is a little bit a little bit sad. But they'll be done by May of next year. Then we can actually start uh, investing heavily in our navy. Let's take a look at uh, the diplomacy. We've, hey, we've got uh, the United Kingdom basically in our court, so we're going to stop influencing them, as well as Puntland. Puntland. Interesting. Um, so we're going to stop influencing them as well, and we're going to do Zaire, sure, why not? And Andorra, sure, why not? Doesn't really, doesn't really hurt anything to just uh, spread out the influence. We have a lot of uh, diplomatic influence up there. Aircraft carrier hangar is also a behind time technology, so we'll keep on going in that direction. Let's just get it up to 1936 tech before we uh, we actually invest heavily in it. Whoa, what's this? Extra 57 IC? Oh, we got our descent all the way down. So yeah, let's uh, shunt that back into production, and we should actually begin with the production of all this stuff down here, yeah. Only 6% speed on this uh, this last group of of interceptors, but that's a that's a nice a nice thing to actually start doing uh, doing full speed uh, production on all that stuff. We did finish one round of our convoy production, so we're up to 95 total available convoys, which is good. Um, we probably didn't have enough convoys to actually be uh, be doing all of our. Uh, all of our convoy routes down here, but I think we do now. So yep, back up to speed 5. And we'll see where we are. We gain 15 manpower every day. Yeah, I think we're going to be uh, rather heavy on, on infantry, um, at least in the beginning here. I don't think it makes sense for us to focus on mobile uh, too much in the way of mobile units. Um, especially because we can't, we like we just gained the ability to build light tanks, um, and we have armored cars on our uh, our um, cavalry units right now, don't we? Yeah, I think the cavalry brigades with the armored car is going to be the extent of our. Um, our armored development at this point. I suppose we could do armored cars, light armor, two cav. Wouldn't be that bad. Let's take a look at that uh, how the vision, how that how that looks. We've got. Oh, we didn't save it. Okay, we've got. Um, this is currently the division we're building. We've got two cav and an armored car. And if we add a light armor to it, we've got a 10% combined arms bonus, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice. Can't complain. Um, it's a four combat width, which sort of sucks. This one's only two combat width. But this one has eight soft attack, and this one has ten. So adding out a light armor, I mean, it's basically completely unupgraded at this point. But it does add a significant amount of, um, of, of armor to it. We've got 11 defensiveness here compared to only nine. And the softness goes way down to 68. That might be pretty nice. That might be pretty nice. So maybe instead of engineers which would really only increase their defensiveness. It would give them a, an additional heart attack, but really I'm not entirely certain that's going to be the best. Um, and they serve the same purpose as armored cars do. Yeah, maybe maybe throwing a light armor on there would be a good thing. Maybe. It would use a lot of fuel, though. A lot more than than it does right now and engineers would only increase the fuel consumption by a little bit well we'll, we'll wait uh, we don't exactly have the industrial capacity to invest in that right now so we'll wait a little bit and see what uh, see what the future looks like we are going to want to uh, shift a little bit of all our leadership over to officer production um, maybe at the end of this year maybe at the, at the end of December we'll shift that over Ethiopia has declared its independence this one province I mean, okay, it's three provinces, but why? 
This happened in the last random game we did as well, didn't it? Like, create puppet. We can, I mean, yeah, we can create a puppet. Great. Why? Why would we? It doesn't make any sense. We have cores on all the land that we own, don't we? Yeah. We have all these cores out here that, uh, that we can take without any penalty. Like, attacking the Soviet Union makes perfect bloody sense for us because half of their country we can take without penalty and the rest of it we can take with only minor penalties. And the same thing goes for Belgium and Romania. Like, it just makes sense for us to attack all of the countries we immediately have borders with because of the, the way that they assign cores in this, in this mod. Really, Communist China? You, you stuck an infantry division right there? Yeah. Well, speaking of, let's, uh... And strategically redeploy people over there. Whoa, are we actually suffering? I think we're actually suffering a decent amount of attrition up here. We've lost uh, maybe about 18 men so far. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll send um, one garrison division and the core HQ over to London, even though it's not actually. Uh, I mean, it, it'll basically serve to protect against uh, against bombing runs. I'm gonna leave one person in Plymouth, move one up to Buda up here, because that's where we have our other port, and then we're going to put one in Coventry, and one in Bristol, maybe? Is that... No, you don't actually have... We'll put one in Oxford, because you're uh, maximum IC. Yeah. We're going to want another core of garrison up here, just to protect the rest of these valuable cities. Make it so that the, uh, the, the Romanians can't just walk in. Hey, we've got radio technology. Uh, let's get the uh, radios right off the bat. And yeah, we'll hike that up as well. That's a top priority, I think. That that ten percent bonus to, uh, to combat efficiency is something you should prioritize right away if your country doesn't start with it in uh, in Hearts of Iron. And yeah, we have the garrison unit walking at one kilometer per hour over here. I feel sorry for them, but hey, whatever works. It's not like we're in combat right now. Our reinforcement need is going up a little bit. Let's just invest a little bit in both of these. Just to uh, just to keep them up to date. It, might, it, it makes a certain amount of sense, I suppose. Since it's so cheap right now, we might as well just invest a little bit. Just to get things started. What's this? First CAG! Alright. Okay, so St. Nazar is technically our main... Um, uh, navy port, but our, our, our main naval port, our naval base, our main our main naval base. But we don't have any any good uh, air bases down there, so maybe we'll keep our aircraft carriers down here in the test um, next to Bordeaux. That might be a good one. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, let's see. When is our carrier going to be built? The first light carrier is going to be built in June of thirty-seven. All right. Well. That's a long way away. So the the random Hearts of Iron scenario generator um, offers offers an option where it gives you a random focus. It gives each country a random focus, and it's fairly obvious from the way our technology uh, is set that our focus is infantry and um, artillery and airplanes. I think it actually gave us an airplane focus because we have. Significant amount of light aircraft practical. We started out with good fighter tech, good bomber tech. Um, we didn't start with any naval research at all, or any armor research at all. Um, so I think that uh, that's going to be a, a detriment for us. Basically, we aren't going to be able to compete in, uh, in the seas um, unless we make a significant investment on our own. Mountain warfare, mountain warfare equipment is nice. Um, it just basically reduces attrition for our, uh, our units, our normal units, um, and it increases the attack and defense of our special units, like our mountain units and our Gurkhas, uh, in mountain regions. And we're going to want to do the same with Arctic warfare, um, even though we're probably not going to be fighting in the Arctic anytime soon and all that stuff, but it's not really uh, that much of a priority at this point. We do have mountains around us, over here and over here, so the mountain warfare isn't uh, a necessary and important research. But we don't really have the Arctic near us, so I'm not too worried about that. We are officially below 500 energy. Um, we have a surplus of basically everything else, but we're going to start suffering from some shortages here, unless we can 
expand and, and take on more military. Uh, it looks like we have another two core of infantry done, which is pretty fantastic. So we've got the third core in here. Yep. And then we'll attach the third core to the first army. And we've got another core. Fourth core. Wonderful. And we'll attach the fourth core to the first army as well. And then we've got the cavalry corps finishing up. We'll attach that to the uh, to the first army, and we'll have a, a fully fleshed out army group done and ready to go. Um, we need to worry about energy. Pretty bad. We're getting a decent amount, but we're going to start suffering from production shortages very very soon here. Um. Okay, I like I like the current order that we have everything in right now. Let's do one more core of infantry as reserve. We'll just start another core. And just to make sure that we don't actually end up wasting anything. I suppose we could start on some uh, some infrastructure. Let's do that. Let's make sure that we have um, basically everything connected by a road. I'm just pressing F here to... Uh, to upgrade the the production, and we, so we want a road from our capital, which I believe is in Paris. Where is our actual capital? It's tough to tell sometimes. Yeah, you know, I'm not too worried about it. Actually, we can tell with the supply map mode. Yeah, okay. Our capital is in Orléans. Really? Oh well, yeah. Okay, we've got our rocket site here. So Orléans is our capital. We want to make sure that we have a. Uh, a road connection from our capital to um, these uh, these border provinces so we can supply people pretty well. But it looks like we have pretty good infrastructure basically all the way around here, so I'm not too worried about that at all. But we are going to want maybe an expanded naval base down here. You are... Yeah, we want a big old naval base over there. And we want St. Nazar to be as big a naval base as possible. And actually, let's make Nantes into a big ol' airbase. We'll just sink some of our industrial capacity into that as well. And do we... No, London's fine the way it is. We have another garrison unit being, being built. I suppose just to, uh, just to make things fun, let's build another five... Another five. Let's build five brigades of um, light armor. Just to get our light armor practical up, and so that we can attach it to these cavalry divisions, um, and get that get that going for us. And yeah, we still only have 72 officers, and now we need uh, just about 10,000 officers for the proper proper officer ratio. But I'm not too worried about that yet. It's only the end of September, and now into October, everything should be just fine. We do have until 1938 until we can declare any war. So we don't need to worry about really uh, having an efficient army. We just basically need to worry about having a, an army that is capable of defending us. At least in the beginning here. Let's take a look at diplomacy, see where everything is. Okay, I think we did pretty well influencing Andorra. And I think Zaire is the other one we're influencing. Oops, that's Belgium. Zaire, yeah, stop. Stop influencing that. And we'll make sure nationalist China and um, Hesse are influenced towards us. And Hesse, I believe, is all the bloody way. Yeah, it's over here. Big old country over there. Education advance. Fantastic. Uh, let's start on our... Where are you? Energy. Energy. Coal. Coal processing. An additional 5% energy production will be nice um, because that is where we're we're at, at zero right now, and you can see our uh, our industrial capacity is going to start bouncing all over the place, um, just because we don't have enough uh, enough energy to run all of our factories. So the fifth core is not actually the fifth core; it's the first um, mounted. Let's do mounted because you can you could either be mounted on horses or mounted on. Uh, trucks and that sort of thing and we'll attach the uh, the first mounted to the uh, the first army and we will deploy the rest of the divisions as they uh, as they get there so yeah we are um, unfortunately down in RIC 
Um, yeah, we can't... We used to be able to fully produce all the things that we had uh, queued up, and now we cannot because of our energy situation. So hopefully we can get our energy situation fixed relatively soon. We're actually doing just fine on our diplomacy, so I'm going to cut back a little bit here. Let's do 4.1. And we'll keep an eye on our diplomatic influence number up here. And yeah, I suppose let's start actually um, doing a little bit of officer production. Very little bit of officer production. Just a token amount. It's only October, end of October. So we have two more months of focusing solely on research. And then we'll sink a whole bunch of our investment into our officer ratio. We don't exactly have the largest army right now, so I'm not too worried about it, as it stands. Game is starting to slow down as more and more people have militaries and deploy them. Um, mechanical computing machine is... Uh, sorry, we, we just researched census tabulation machine. But that gives us a uh, flat 2% bonus to our research efficiency. And I think that's another, um, another tech that we're just not going to reinvest elsewhere. What are these? Oh, our garrison units. So we deploy them down here to St. Nazar. Create a new high command, and this is the second gear. And we are going to select all of them, attach them, and move them up here. Do a little transport. And select these guys, and we are going to do uh, the resources map mode. We want one in Thetford up here, and we'll we'll put the uh, the garrison core division up there as well. We're going to have another one down here. Should be fine. And then, I suppose, let's see, we've got three more garrison divisions. Two more. Two more garrison divisions to deal with. We've got a line right here. Let's, let's make sure that things are doing just fine in this area. Yeah, it'll be fine. Let's see how that looks. We may want to deploy that infantry division we're building up in this area, just so that we have some mobility. Hey, there's our uh, first bomber. We'll deploy you down here to test it. And we'll make another tactical bomber. That brought our practical all the way up to 3%, rather than negative something nonsensical or other. Um, so yeah, we're gonna t t going to uh, queue up another one to take advantage of the best um, practical reduction that we can. And call that good for now. The uh, motorized infantry and infantry weapon research that we have is very um, inefficient, unfortunately enough, but that'll be okay. Hey, we're up to 1% officer ratio. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, it's just about the end of, the end of November, so I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, those infantry weapons are taking a very long time because they are so inefficient, but I do want to have the... Uh, the best weapons. Um, I mean, infantry are basically going to be the backbone of our army until like five years from now when we can actually start deploying a significant amount of uh, motorized units. So yeah, we want we want the best artillery um, that we possibly can get. We want the best um, infantry weapons that we can possibly get. And basically anything else is secondary. So, we just built our first combat ship. Uh, it is a destroyer. A rank 1 destroyer. It can only go 1,500 miles, which means we probably shouldn't attach it to our transports because they can go 3,000 miles, but it's better than nothing, and I really don't want our transports to be destroyed because they don't have any sub-defense. And one thing that destroyers are excellent at is providing defense at the, at the sea, and sub-attack. Um, they have they have five sub-attack. And they're pretty darn good at detecting subs, too. They've got a seven in, in sub-detection. So let's just make sure that our transports don't get completely destroyed by submarines. We have our first destroyer built, um, which brings our practical all the way up to only negative 30. So let's build one more. It only costs six IC. Um, we probably won't be able to actually begin production of it. Um, yeah. It looks... Oh, we can. All right. Fantastic. Better artillery barrel and ammunition. Still behind time on that. 
So we're going to continue researching it. And we're actually losing money now because somebody uh, cancelled our trade agreement for their for supplies. Which I think is the only thing that's really keeping us uh, keeping us alive. Yeah, we're trading away 15 supplies every day. I really would prefer um, more energy than zero, but I guess beggars can't be choosers all the time. Alright, our mount mounted core is being extended. And now we need to decide what the next uh, production we're going to do is. Let's do let's do our mountain division. We haven't done that yet, right? No, okay. So we've got Gurkha, two mountain and an engineer. We can build five, six, six of them in total, but we only want five. We want one full mountain core. There we go. Wonderful. And we will deploy them in the south, because that is where the majority of the mountains are. Um, so if we do end up attacking the Soviet Union, they'll be able to push into this area and take... There are no victory provinces in that area. So they will be pretty useless if we attack the Soviet Union. But, but, if we do decide to attack Belgium as our first target, all of this land over here... Click on the right button, please. All of this land is mountains, and there is a significant amount of mountains in Spain proper itself. So that will be a nice a nice division to have. And uh, coming up into the, the Scottish region, if we do it, decide to attack Romania, basically we're going to want the mountain division, the mountain core, um, at the front lines of any army that we actually do attack. All right, well, it is the 20th of December 1936. Um, I'm sorry that there hasn't been any real combat, but I think we're in a good spot. Um, the beginning of the next video, we are going to wait until the end of 1936, beginning of 1937, and start shifting our leadership ratio over from pure technology to basically um, half tech, half officers, just so that we can get our officer ratio up to a decently respectable number. Um, so, uh, thank you much again for joining me. I'm going to take a break here, and I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.